Uh, my name is Hei Kong. Um, I'm the ex-Facebook guy that uh, he's talking about. Uh, uh, okay, so quick intro for, about myself. Uh, basically, I worked in Facebook since uh, 2013, and I just got back about a couple years, a couple months before. I worked on iOS Messenger. I worked on the core infrastructure team. So basically, what we do, we like I like to tell people we're like app governance. So basically, we try to govern, you know, all the product people working on on top of our app. Um, and then we do a lot of decisions around, you know, uh, design, like design patterns and stuff like that. Yeah. So our team is probably like five, six, seven people, um, and then like the whole iOS team on Messenger is like fifty people, and then like the whole Messenger team is like three hundred people. Yeah. Uh, so uh, why I'm back in Singapore, basically, um, back because family's here, um, and um, I I only plan to stay at Facebook for like four to five years, and then I'm back, and I'm very interested to talk about anything related to engineering culture, engineering ecosystem in Singapore, and how to improve that, how to you know, what kind of like the leverages that we can do um, to improve that and talk about that. So if, if you guys are interested, reach out to me. I am at Hang Hong Lee, yeah. Okay, so let's, uh, this topic, uh, building reactive apps without Rx. Uh, so reactive, uh, reactive apps are basically um, apps that respond quickly, right? Um, usually like push-based stuff messaging is one of them. Um, oh yeah, what, whatever that I say today is, does not represent whatever that is going on in, in Facebook, by the way. Yeah, just to put that on the record. Um, the, so, reactive apps are usually functional, and I mean, I don't need to talk so much about this, I'm just going to throw it out. Uh, pure, immutable, no side effects. Um, every, everybody should know that if they don't, um, yeah, go watch some talks. Uh, and um, reactive uh, change... Reactive here is a bit more new kind of term. Um, functional reactive is just two big words put together. Uh, functional meaning like pure, and reactive meaning it's like you know live. You know it works in real time. Um, reacts to signals and whatever that means. Okay, and uh, basically push notifications, persistent connections, and information is coming in on more than one place. Right, you come in push notifications, uh, and you can have like MTTT or like you know some web socket coming in um, data. Uh, in different forms. Um, Non-reactive is kind of like, you know, um, I don't know whether apps are nowadays still doing this kind of style, but uh, probably they are. Um, you know, you navigate somewhere and then you could request for some data from database, from network, and tapping, could refresh. These are the kind of things that are like, you know, not reactive and then people need to do things to get other things going, right? Um, okay, so now I want to talk about an example. This is a collaborative to do this built by myself. Um, <laughs> uh, very ugly, but um, basically you can think about it as like a to-do list that like anybody can edit, right? And I want to use this as an example to you know kind of drive my point about how to build something like this without using like React uh, Rx. So I forgot a page about Rx. Yeah, sorry. So there's a page about Rx. So what is Rx? So Rx is a framework, right? Rx framework is the framework that helps you build reactive apps. And so a lot of people are still um, um, doing apps like this in non-reactive style, but how do we, tr this talk is about how we transition from this non-reactive style to kind of a more reactive style uh, app, which is more live and feeling better for, for the consumer. You know, they, they see messages come in, they see things update in, in real time, right? Um, so, um, like, so for example, like I recently heard a story, just like this weekend, heard a story about like Grab Taxi, you know, uh, somebody, decided that they, when they um, request for something, then they said, oh, sorry, not, no longer at this price, and you got to reload it again, and then you got to you know, request again for another price. But in the reactive world, that shouldn't happen, right? Because the price will be pushed to you uh, in real time. Okay. Um, so, right. So this collaborative to-do list, um, essentially, this is um, a to-do list. Uh, I forgot to put the numbers. So now the, the, the HH and stuff, like, they are all names. Um, of people who last edited the, 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 the to-do list, okay? And so this to-do list has a view model, right? Uh, as you would think, it is the completion part, the title, the description, the profile. So kind of like, you can think about it as like the view model is, if anybody's not familiar with like the model view model system, this is the view model um, and it should, yeah. It's uh, the complete information uh, required to for the view to display. Um, and basically you can, uh, 
put in all the information that is supposed to come out in the field. So, right. so, so look at it, this, this kind of truth makes sense. Uh, basically, the view model contains all the, the strings and everything, and then so when you go through the, the view hierarchy, the the view hierarchy, and then the view hierarchy just basically displays it, right? Uh, it's pretty straightforward, it should be a pure uh, system where like view model goes in, and then views just display stuff, right? Um, okay. And so what um, Rx is trying to do here is to make this system go this way. So basically connecting the data directly to the views or like to, to, to where they need to be displayed, right? And um, this, this makes some sense, right? Like you, 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 I'm not bashing on Rx, this is a good pattern here. And um, basically what happens is that these things um, this, these vertical stuff are, are called observables, right? Like they, they are things that can um, react to new data coming in. And new data coming in, in this sense, is called signals, right? New data coming in, new anything coming in, right? Everything here is generic. Um, and so these uh, end up also be able to um, emit uh, signals, right? Like this tap handler, you tap on the, the, the done thing, and then it goes fires off a signal somewhere to some other device or like somewhere else. Even this device itself would handle that signal. And so one signal could have multiple um, observables. So basically, uh, the pipe can get quite complicated, right? When uh, multiple signals come in and each one of them could affect different things. So for example, like I said, uh, the, um, uh, the, the name is the last guy who edited it. So when you hit the cross, you also need to change that profile name on the right side. Um, and so this is one example of like, you know, something that can be quite complicated when things go uh, long signals. Right. And so the question here is how can we you know, uh, work from our existing, um, existing one, which looks like this, um, into, um, into a more reactive version, right? Um, so basically, uh, we, need to, we need to move towards a, a like Rx-like style, style it, where we will reload, right? Every time we receive some sort of signal, right? That, um, I mean, in the easiest way, in, in, instead of reacting, um, let's say, um, instead of reacting, every single observable has a potential signal to respond to, or uh, like it would respond to a few signals at once, right? We want to be able to um, have the real timeness of a system like this, but not the development complexity uh, involved. Uh, in this, right? So that's what I mean by like, and, and we got to make it incremental so that we can keep building, we can keep shipping, right? We can, um, <coughs> instead of jumping right in to rewrite our code, like, right, I wrote it right there, um, to rewrite our code in Rx. Uh, okay, so from here, I mean, um, we, okay, so we need to first, uh, we want to first, the, the, the simplest way to do it is to reload everything when we get any kind of signal, right? That this page is, or, or we want to aggregate that by page, right? We, we generate the view model, we regenerate the view model all the time. It's kind of like a React style, right? Um, so you think about it, uh, so we want to scope the signals, we want to group them up. They are the same logical unit, the same page, and we group them up. And as long as, so why this makes sense is because um, as long as we have good caching on some of the data layer, the whole data layer, we can always request and get something re relatively cheap, right? If, if it was expensive, it would have been cached on the me memory side. It was go to network, it would have been cached on the data side, right? So you think about it as a uh, reload data by table view or except UI collection view, right? You call reload data every time you get uh, something uh, that might have changed. Um, and, and might have changed in this sense, like the Git example here says, oh, when somebody says, oh yeah, I changed something and then you just pull, right? You don't care about like what it was. I mean. You can handle what exactly it was that changed, but that would be more complicated and more work for you to do. So here we want to do it such that we, we do as little work as possible and try to achieve you know reactive ad, while at the same time we need to consider all the um, trade-offs that we're taking, right? So in this case, trade-offs we are we are taking um, the some uh, performance trade-off, right? Because but if we have good caching, we kind of like uh, make that problem not so bad, right? So um, there's some. Um, data layer improvements that you can do like in the future, like in the beginning you would do like a reload data style and just reload data all the time and then um, you eventually, the next step to move into some of the um, more recent, more popular uh, 
systems where like GraphQL subscriptions and like Realm uh, that basically have a uh, sync database for you and they you know they are the ones that feeding you the changes and they will help you optimize for that. This is at the data layer. So then you get problems at the view layer, right? Because your view model keeps get regenerated and all that view models get pushed down to the to the views and that like, you keep having to you know hydrate the views like like the same React, but like basically uh, set set the views with, with your view model, right? Right. So the easiest way, we don't check anything. We just put it in, call set needs layout after that, and then you know it might be unnecessary reloading and it might be on the main track. Yes, there's a lot of work that can be done, but um, this is one of the steps. We know all the we know all the trade offs that we're taking, and yes. So, and then the next thing that we can do, the next improvement that we can do is to check the quality of the view model, right? Because if you think about the, I wrote the next page, the virtual DOM, yeah. So think about like virtual DOM, uh, DOM virtual DOM diffing, like it's the same view model as a hierarchy that you can diff to make sure that you know which exact part of the view is changing and you kind of like um, call reload data, or like set needs layout on that particular cell. I mean, um, of course, the improvements that we have here, um, they go on top of that is like component kit, uh, which is not in Swift. It's few in Swift, which I've never used myself because Facebook doesn't work in Swift. Um, but the idea is that we want to have a system that can manage the views for us by we telling them, okay, now it looks like this. Then later we say that, oh, it looks the same. But then you know we have to have the system uh, ignore us and says, oh yeah, it didn't change, so I don't need to do anything, right? Um, and this is what these kind of components, uh, these kind of frameworks do. I mean, they do a lot, a lot more stuff than, than that, but um, this is the, the part that we need from them. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> that was fast. Okay. So, um, yeah, now we go into the questions. Uh, so, basically, uh, a little bit of a conclusion uh, for this. Uh, basically, uh, I think like it's good that more, like, more people should move towards you know, doing reactive apps because it's. Uh, it's the new way to do things, and we, we shouldn't have people keeping keep reloading data for new data. And a lot of the technologies are improving um, to push us data instead of having to um, us to keep pulling for data. And so um, when we gather all the signals, you know, we need to reload quickly and like you know get um, the user the fastest, uh, most reactive app possible. Yeah. Okay. Questions. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not sure how much you can talk about it, but maybe you can like, uh, elaborate a bit about messengers. <laughs> so um, I would I would say that um, the current like um, sync data model stuff is pretty um, on point with what uh, we want to do in general. Like sync data models are the way sync databases are the way to go. Um, if, if you ask me, uh, so basically what sync database means is like Firebase or Realm, basically having a database on the client, a database on the on server, and then we sync those databases to make sure that you know they are always in sync. And then and you have different clients, right? So they have multiple client side databases and they all like us keeping in sync with each other. And so basically that means that it's like the generic um, Syncing of data, so syncing of generic data, so any kind of data, not just messaging data, right? We built like a whole um, uh, powerhouse of like you know syncing data for messages only, and then we realized that we need you know a generic one actually, right? Um, and so um, now we have all these uh, latest new, new technologies like Realm, like Firebase, like they, they help us sync data, and that works very well for uh, a messaging app as well. So you're saying you're using Realm? No. No, right? No, but I mean everything in Facebook is built in house. Okay. So I would say that the trends are going that way, but uh, we don't. Yeah, we. I mean, we. You, you can you can say that we don't use almost anything that is outside. Like, like there is very little that that uh, code that we use that is not internally of the Facebook. Yeah. What's what's the database? Like the uh, is in what do you mean? What's, what's the database? That, like the messenger is alternate of Firebase. What's there? Oh, we're using our own one. What yeah. Do you mean own one? <laughs> yeah, it's not open source. 
Uh, well, I can tell you what it is, but like, I, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't make sense to you because it's not open source and there's no articles oh, written so the about it. the database is all purely custom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's similar architecture as Firebase? Or? Well, I wouldn't know about that because I'm not sure about Firebase, but it's very similar to Realm, yeah. Similar in concept, yes. So I assume it's, uh, like the, it's also supported with uh, like GraphQL? Yes, of course, right? yes. We love GraphQL, everywhere is GraphQL. <laughs> and it works very well with GraphQL subscription, right? Databases like this work very well with GraphQL subscriptions, which we are very happy about. Yeah. What about the client side architecture? Is it similar to what you talked about? As in, yes, you don't use Rx? No, we don't use Rx, no, yes. But I mean, I do see the value in it, right? If, if I were a small app, maybe I would try it. Right, like I, there, there are very good upsides of using RX. Right, you, it's just that the complexity growth might be a bit hard to handle. Right, it's it's good. It's uh, you know, it it, it avoids all the problems that I talked about. Right, yeah. Uh, there is one. More yeah, go ahead. Just a comment. It would be good if we have uh, working at some point, right. especially for the different parts. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, I agree, yes. I mean, I think it will be a bit more technical down that path, but I mean, in, in, in general, I think the different part is mostly just equality checking. So you do uh, equal, equal, triple equals, and then hash check, and then uh, deep equality check. So you, if you do a deep equality check, you basically go down the whole tree to find out which one on, on the left subtree is changed or the right subtree is changed. So if the right subtree is not changed, then nothing on the right should be changed in the UI. Does that make sense? So basically, I can definitively say uh, if, if two view models are different and something needs to change. And, but I, I can, not only can I say that, I can also narrow down to exactly which subtree changed. And so I, when I narrow down to the exact subtree that changed, I can also um, map that onto the, 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 the symmetrical view hierarchy and I know that that one also changed. Yeah, let me mean how you build the tree how you maintain the tree and how you make the right. Um, so in this in this this thing is a tree, right? Like, and so imagine there's another tree down here, and then there's another tree up there, right? And so if if those these these three things don't change, but that tree changed, I I would know that this only this part and whatever is inside here needs to change. Does that make sense? I mean, like, uh, what framework? Do you Oh yeah, that's how Componicate works, right? For for in Facebook, right? So that is the concept of how it works. I mean, if you use Objective C, then yes, I would definitely recommend Componicate. Um, if you don't, if you use Swift, then I don't know. You can try Field of Swift. I don't know. Yeah. Any oh. question? Uh, is it like? Uh, by creating your own framework rather than just use uh, existing framework like Rx table view data source, which all which also does the editing part. Rx table view data source. Yes, correct. Yes, it does. Um, well, I'm talking of more about like just generic views, right? Like um, you you could hook them up individually. I I mean I'm not trying to say that Rx is not good. I'm just trying to say that if you already existingly have a model, uh, you existingly have a model like this, it is easier for you to go to go this way rather than to right rather than to go into Rx from here like this boom. You see what I mean? Yeah but uh, again like you have to convert your view model to a uh, signal processing unit. Okay. Which, which generates a signal. So you have to create uh, some well, some observ obser observables there. Why would you need to create a view model? Uh, how will you get those signals uh, or uh, the events you want for those different parts? You might need to repeat that one more time. Say it again. So you have to convert your view model to, yeah. to some observables in both cases. Here also you will get those events and then you will write your own different uh, algorithm for the UI to lay out the UI, whatever you want to change. And in, in that scenario also, you are also doing the same, the, the you are writing the view well, model. Well, you can think about it. I think you can think about it uh, in this way, right? Oh, sorry. Go this way. You can think about this as a network call, right? Something come in and you just do a network call again. And then this one that is 
you, you should already have this, right? You should already have this and at some point. But this generally, uh, like the people, if they don't have the reactive application, they have the request based application. And they have this, we want a laser very simple problem. They don't have observables as such. Right, they don't. So they have to convert the view model in any way, in both if you go by, by the RX way or by Google display. You well, you don't have to. The you, 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 you just need to trigger off the fact against like table view reload data, right? Like you just call reload data and everything is going to go and ask for the number of rows, when ask for the cell for the next row, like it just goes again. Everything just takes longer. It's more lousy. Is This performance is not as good, but there are things that we can do to improve the performance. And, but, so, so what I'm trying to say is that um, Rx and, and uh, non-reactive apps, it's a spectrum. You can start moving along because getting people, what I feel is that getting people to jump from non-reactive apps all the way to, to Rx is a big jump, right? It's, it's going to be complicated for their mind. Uh, but like the, so getting them step by step there and then they start realizing, oh yeah, all these are just mapping stuff, you know, I'm just like mapping all these things all around. And, and then eventually they'll realize, oh yeah, oh that's what RX is, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, so that's, that's my sense, yeah. Okay. This makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I think, okay, you know. Okay, thank you. Actually, I have one which, oh, okay. I mean, which show the code. I was like, okay, where's the code, where's the code? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't have time to put up the code. Uh, I mean, I didn't have time to put up any code. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's so. Okay, maybe part two. Yeah, maybe next time. Yeah. All right.